battle for control of an army ammunition depot 20 miles from Zagreb. The first time the fighting has come so close to the capital. The army held on, but the Croats have also been able to claim significant success. Chronically underprovided till now with heavy weapons, they received a sudden infusion of arms and ammunition from the unexpected surrender of federal forces in a number of garrisons across Croatia. Blockaded for days, they decided to give up rather than try to break out. Unusually for this war, it was a bloodless success as the Croats ran their flag into the Zagreb headquarters of the Federal Air Force. The officers based there surrendered without a fight and were jeered out of the building, which was also an intelligence gathering center. This evening, the air raid warning sounded after two MiGs of the Federal Air Force had made a low pass over the capital. People ran for cover and prepared for the worst. The war is getting close to home. The Federal Air Force was also in action above a number of the war zones, especially where a garrison had just surrendered, as here in Gospic. The jets didn't change the pattern of events, but they did kill a sound technician of the Croatian television crew that took these pictures. And the battles for barracks are far from over yet. Where garrisons have not surrendered, the Croats are trying to loudspeaker them into submission with folk music and news, the only peaceful bombardment of the war. Up to 200 people are reported to have died in another day of fighting along Croatia's border with Serbia. A ceasefire ordered this month by the Yugoslav collective presidency has been increasingly ignored. Serbian guerrillas have been trying to drive Croatians out of mixed nationality villages near Serbia's border. And Croatian militia have struck at Yugoslav Federal Army tanks and transport units for the first time. Croatia's government says all-out war is imminent and has disclosed that part of the Republic's industrial sector has been converted to produce mines, grenades and rocket launchers. Hungary has reported more than 10,000 refugees arriving from Croatia. Around 3,000 Australian Croats, mainly women, today urged Canberra to support their homeland's bid for independence. The rally in Sydney called for an end to the fighting and for Western intervention in the conflict. Ethnic affairs reporter Edwina Gatenby. The fighting may be half a world away, but the pain is being shared here in Australia. These women are the silent sufferers. Croatian women, sisters, daughters, mothers, mourning the conflict that is claiming family members in their homeland. Because they're killing our sons and they're killing our children. The stresses are showing in Australia's Croatian community. A Sydney woman was recently hospitalised for a breakdown caused by concern for family members in Croatia. Katie Sepovic is another who lives constantly in fear in her case, for the parents she hasn't seen in 12 years. In the last letter, they said, you might not get this letter. Things are looking grim. Stop the killing! Stop the killing! It's a fear that's slowly turning to anger as tales of brutal murders emerge from the Republic. And they are doing horrific massacres, um, torturings that are going on, that are, that are so vile. Um, but they must be talked about because they are not manufactured they are the truth this is what is happening to my people in Croatia right now Croatians here believe the only way to avoid more bloodshed is through outside intervention they want Australia to lead the rest of the Western world in recognizing Croatian independence as fierce battles rage with Serbian militia the escalating conflict has claimed another five lives bringing to 300 the number killed since Croatia's declaration of independence two months ago Croatian men between the ages of 18 and 50 are now being called up as the government mobilizes for all-out war unless the federal attacks cease within a week. In the Croatian town of Tenja, Serbian separatists launch an attack on Croatian police. Since declaring its independence in June, Croatia has repeatedly accused Serb-dominated federal army units of siding with these Serb separatists. Yesterday, the fighting was reported on a number of fronts, claiming up to nine lives.
The Republic's Defence Minister, Luka Bebic, declared Croatia was at war, that it would go ahead with a general mobilisation unless federal troops returned to their barracks immediately and unless the minority Serb nationalists were disarmed. In the Croatian capital, Zagreb, people are calling for international help in their struggle for independence. They say they feel cut off from the world, their plight ignored. In eastern Croatia, local forces reportedly downed a federal war plane and right across the Republic, territorial defence units are being formed to shore up the Croatian police and National Guard. Croatia, its defence minister says, is determined to defend itself despite the superiority of the federal army. The latest fighting between the Croat majority and Serb minority has broken a truce ordered earlier this month by the Yugoslav government. Croatia is accusing Yugoslavia's federal army of siding with the Serbs and has called for United Nations help. Under the terms of the truce, the federal forces are supposed to form a buffer zone between armed Serbs in Croatia and local militia. But Croatia's defence minister says the Republic intends to fully mobilise its army and engage federal troops in battle if attacks on its territory don't stop within a week. It was near Vukovar that the jet was shot down, so it was there that the federal forces struck back. Radio Zagreb said they were joined by Serb guerrillas in trying to take the town. Three civilians were killed and 11 wounded, but Croatian forces still control the town. The majority of residents have fled. Even the most conservative figures put the casualty toll in Croatia at more than 200 dead since independence was declared two months ago. Croatian leaders say they'll go ahead with a general mobilisation unless federal forces withdraw to barracks by Saturday. On the diplomatic front, Belgrade Radio has quoted an unidentified Austrian official as saying there's no reason not to recognise Croatia as independent or the other rebel republic, Slovenia.